there's one story that I'd love for you to share. And, you know, like, you don't really share anything like that sorted. It's, you're kind of like the butt of the joke in the chapters, you know, like in a way. But there's one story in particular that I really love because I really related to it. You talk about like not really drinking on the job or smoking weed. And uh, you had this um, invitation by Snoop Dogg. You didn't know that he was back on the ganj and uh, you had these like Cuban cigars, you offered him one and then he offered you a blunt and unbeknownst to you, what happened? <laughs> well, uh, th this was, uh, I, wanna, uh, I wanna say it was the year 2000, maybe 2002. Uh, it's certainly correct in the book. Uh, it was one of uh, Lincoln Park's Project Revolution tours where they used to put together fairly eclectic lineups for, for like a major rock show. They would, they would put hip hop artists on, they would put punk bands on, they would put ska bands on. Uh, and that one year in particular, Snoop was on. And, and like you referred to, this was right in the middle. I don't know if everyone will recall it, but th there was a, a famous couple of months where Snoop is off the gone, Snoop has Snoop renounced weed, and it was like a big deal. And right, I swear to God, it was right in the middle of all this. Um, I had wrapped up all my interviews that day. It was in Camden, New Jersey. Um, I had done all my interviews by late afternoon, and my, my producer came to me and said, hey, it's, it's not on your schedule, but do you want to talk to Snoop Dogg? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to talk to Snoop Dogg. Really interesting guy. Uh, and, and hey, I hear he's not smoking weed. I didn't have anything prepared to speak to him about. But I figured that was an easy enough start. And, and sure enough, I walk in and like you said, I just come back from uh, Bermuda. So I had Cuban cigars and I figured, oh, I, I saw cigars on the coffee table. So I gave one to Snoop and he's, he smelled, he's a blue Brutus, a true pimp. Uh, and and he, he lit the mini Cohiba up. And then I'm, I start to roll the, the tape and um, sure enough, he, he lights his cigar and hands it to me. And this is what a dopey farm boy fuck I am. I'm like, thinking to myself, well, gosh, Mr. Dog, he's a, he's a terribly nice gentleman. He's offered me one of his own cigars. And why is there something green stick? Oh my God, it's marijuana. And uh, I, I ended up, I took two hits off of it. And I, I, I only took the first, at that point I hadn't smoked weed in like 10 years. And um, I didn't want to hit it just because I knew I'd get really wasted. And then he and his guys are like staring at me. And I'm like, fuck, I got to hit this. So I hit it twice as it went around. I got so, the name of the, the, the full title of the chapter is The Time Snoop Dogg Got Me So High I Drooled in My Own Lap. And um, I, I literally, I couldn't even make it through the interview. And uh, I end up out at the soundboard to watch Corn Set. And I look like an extra from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, I'm staring up at the ceiling, looking at like colored lights up in the ceiling that weren't there. That's how high I was. And uh, I feel something itchy on my chin. And I look down and there is this thick, snotty strand of drool from my mouth to my chin. And I look down and there is a puddle of drool in my lap. And I look like I was on fucking Thorazine or something. Like, ah. 